you are the most important person in a child's life. How you interact and respond to your child will help them grow and develop for the rest of their life. When we respond predictably and warmly to your baby, your baby starts to understand that the world is a secure place and you become, they become securely attached to you, meaning that they understand that when they cry, you're going to respond to them and take care of them. And the brain is developed by that give and take of a relationship. It's called the serve and return of a relationship. So your baby cries and you respond. Your baby smiles and you smile back. It's the serve and return. And research tells us it's that relationship, that back and forth, serve and return, that actually builds the baby's brains. And the brain and that provides the basis for the child to be able the baby to be able to learn and explore and um, um, understand the world around them. When your baby's little, you we uh, you have to do everything for your baby. You you feed them, you take care of them, you change them. You create the environment for your baby and you do everything for them. As your baby gets older, they're going to start to explore the world in a different way. And so you want to, we need to start responding to them in a different way. So by when they were little, when you responded to them and created that secure base, you want to still respond to them as they're exploring the world, but you allow them to explore the world in their own way. So you, you're a safe base, your baby goes out, they explore the world, and then they come back to you and they check in with you. And as children grow, they, they need to explore and understand their world in different ways. And sometimes this is hard when you're used to a young child and doing everything for your child and then your child starts to grow up and get older and they want to do more things for themselves. Um, so what you want to do as, as you, is you want your child to lead and that means you start um, observing. One of the strategies is, is by just observing, you know, following your child. What are they interested in? What are they playing with? What are what are they, how are they playing with these toys? And then you wait, you just wait and see, um, you know, how they're going to put things together, how they're going to play with the toys. And then you, um, you listen, you listen to them and you, you listen to the way they tell the stories or how they describe the toy that they're playing with. So you can think about it as observing, waiting, and then listening to what your child's doing. And in that way, you're letting them lead the play. You let them be in charge instead of you being in charge as the adult. As your child gets older and you let a child lead, it, it has that ability to, um, it, lets, it builds their confidence, it builds their self-esteem. It increases language because they're starting to show you and tell you what they're interested in. Uh, so it builds communication, uh, it builds their self-confidence. Um, and it, it builds their problem solving because they're able to explore and figure things out. And it, by you showing them that you're interested in what they're doing, when they're leading the play, um, it builds their self-confidence and their self-esteem and gives them the message that they're important as well. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand how important play is for children. Play is actually how children make sense of the world. And it actually, by allowing children to play, it helps their cognitive development, it helps their problem solving. And play actually goes through different stages. So when children are very young, they have what's called solitary play. And solitary play is where you, you play by yourself. And with very young children, they might um, bang a toy, they might eat a toy. Um, but solitary play is important all the way through life. So children still always need time for just to play, to explore and understand things by themselves. The next stage of play is sometimes called parallel play, where children will play sort of side by side. They might play side by side with you, where they, uh, you know, you're playing with the same toys or you're, you're reading a book together. So it's par parallel play. Then children, as they get older, start to play what's called associative play. And that's where, um, for example, you might be in a, in a sandbox and playing together where you're both dumping sand into the truck. You're not really playing together or sharing the truck, but you're just starting to share the space a little bit. And then you move into a stage called cooperative play, where as a preschooler or an older child, four or five years old, you can start to share toys, 
Um, there might be, uh, you know, there might be games with rules. There, you can have a leader, but that's a little bit older. And children need all these different stages of play development. And um, they, there's also a stage called onlooker play, where um, it's it's like an observer, where children will just watch and observe. And again, that's their way of um, thinking and problem solving and figuring out, figuring things out. Parent-child interaction happens all the time throughout the day. And um, there doesn't have to be a set time of day. Um, and, and you don't have to be responding and letting your child take the lead all the time, all the time through the day. But just being aware of it and thinking about, you can have, um, interactions can happen during natural routine times. So when you're, when you're making dinner, you might decide that you want to have a time where you're really listening to your child's stories or following their lead or letting them play as you're making dinner. When you're cleaning up the toys, um, you can use that as an, as an opportunity to be responsive and doing that turn taking with your child. So parent-child interactions happen all the time throughout the day. As you are the most important person in your child's life, that interaction you have with your child will set the groundwork for building the child's brain, building the child's cognitive development, social, emotional development. Everything about your child happens within that relationship with you. And so that relationship is, sets the, is the beginning of all future learning for your child.